Hi, my name's Sonia and this is my channel, See It Then, See It Now. And I just want to start by saying thank you so much to everybody who watched my first video. I got a great response and I really, really appreciate it. So thank you so much. Recently I carried out a bathroom makeover and I was looking at options of things to display to make the bathroom look beautiful and I decided on a display tray and um, I searched for one I couldn't find one that was the right price or the right size so I decided to make my own and I did this using scrap wood. I cut four pieces of wood for the size of the tray at a 45 degree angle. The wood that I used was the framework from a canvas I no longer needed. I simply took the canvas off, I took out the staples and repurposed the pieces of wood for the side of my tray. Once I'd cut the first piece, I used it as a template to measure up for the second piece. That way I ensured I had them the same size. When I'm using the mitre saw, I like to line up the blade with where I need the cut to be while the mitre saw is off and then turn it on to make the cut. I just found this is the easiest way to make sure I cut in the right place. For the base of the tray, I use some leftover laminate flooring and here I'm just clamping a guide onto the laminate flooring so that I have a guide to run the circular saw along to make sure that I stay in a reasonably straight line. I'm not very good at keeping the circular saw straight so I found this is the best way just to help me guide it along. So as you can see, I can just bob the circular saw against the guide and then just run it along. You do still have to watch the guide doesn't move, but it does help keep you a little bit more straight. So in order to set up the guide, I just place the blade where I want it to cut, mark where the edge of the saw comes to, and then I just mark that up, place the guide piece of wood across. That way I know it's going to cut straight. I just painted the areas that you're going to see once the tray is completed and I didn't paint the areas where I'm going to be gluing. The reason for this is that unpainted wood bonds better so you should always glue on bare wood where possible. The paint covered really well, it really did only need the one coat. I will be giving it another coat later on in the process. Once all the pieces of wood for the side were painted, I also painted the edge of the laminate flooring board that was for the bottom. To glue the tray together, I used no more nails. I wasn't sure how wood glue would go on with the laminate, so that's what made me choose no more nails. I did find it really difficult to get it out the tube. It was really tough to squeeze it out. I don't know whether my gun's a bit raw pet or whether it just is hard to get out the tube, but I did find it quite difficult. Once I had all the pieces glued, I used some clamps to clamp each corner of the tray. As I put the clamps on, I made sure that everything was straight and in line. And as I put each clamp on, I just made sure that nothing had moved because it was quite easy to move pieces of wood. Once I got the clamps in place and I was happy that it was all straight, I then just carefully cleaned off any glue that had oozed out. And then I left the whole thing overnight just to give it plenty of time to, to set. Now that my glue was set, I filled in the gaps at each corner with some ready to use filler. I used a very specialised technique of just squidging it in with my fingers. Once I got this in, I left it to dry and then I sanded the edges just to make them smooth. Now for the fun bit, we get to play with some air dry clay. I'm pretty new to using air dry clay and I absolutely love it. The possibilities with this stuff are endless, I just absolutely love it using some moulds that I got from Amazon. I literally just pushed it in to the mould, then I rolled it out, then I cut any excess off because I needed it to be smooth on the outside. Then I rolled it some more, cut any excess off, and kept repeating this process until I got it all smooth and all pushed into the mould. I tried a few different techniques for getting it out, and I found the best way to get it out of the mould 
was to turn the mould upside down as you can see here and just gently ease it out. I tried all sorts but this seemed to be the best way to get it out without damaging the mould. Once I'd made enough moulds to cover one side of the tray, I used wood glue to glue each piece of the moulding into place. I just bobbed some glue on, spread it out and then carefully placed the mould in place. I didn't want two pieces of moulding to meet at the corner, uh, which is why I placed the moulding around the corner, just to ensure that that wouldn't be a problem. I did complete this one side and then I let the air dry clay go off before doing the other side. I didn't want to risk it coming loose or squidging the clay before it was dry. So I let this side completely set and then I did the other side. Now that I've got mould all the way around the tray, it's back to some different moulds, also from Amazon, and I'm making some moulds to go around the top. So we've got some roses and some leaves, same principle. I just pushed it in until it was smooth on the outside. It's also best to make sure that you don't have any uh, bits going over the edges because you get a better mould if there isn't any excess over the edges. I made the moulds and then I glued them in place. Using the wood glue again, I just glued them around the sides of the tray. I tried to not just have them flat, make them more like leaves. So I put little bends in them rather than them being really flat. Give them a bit more dimension. I just kept making moulds and gluing them on until I was happy with the way that it looked. Once I'd finished putting moulds all the way around the top of the tray and they'd all gone off and hardened, I then gave the tray a coat of the smudge French Chic paint. This was actually quite time consuming because it's quite hard work getting it into all the little areas and like underneath the leaves and in all the flowers. It took a bit of time but the end result is worth it so it was worth the time. I did actually play around with painting the flowers different colours and things but in the end I decided that I was just going to paint the whole thing grey. Using E6000 I glued some beads onto the bottom of the tray to act as feet. Because I was putting the tray in the bathroom I didn't want it to be flat on the surface without a gap just in case any water got underneath and um, so I just these little beads on just to make sure there was a gap underneath the tray just in case so I basically just measured where they needed to be and placed them and then cleaned up any excess glue that oozed out from underneath. Once these had set I did actually paint the underneath side of the tray but I don't have footage of that but I just gave it a coat of the French Chic smudge paint just to tidy it up. Using a small brush and some white acrylic paint I just dabbed areas of the leaves and the flowers just to highlight. I just put a tiny bit of paint on the brush and made sure that there wasn't lots of paint on it just so that it didn't blob or put too much on. But I basically just ran it over the flowers and the leaves just highlighting areas just to make it stand out rather than it just being the one grey colour just to like highlight the mould really. Once the white paint had dried, I gave it a coat of matte clear varnish just to seal everything. I didn't varnish the base with it being laminate flooring, I didn't feel that that needed to be sealed, um, so I just sealed the sides with the varnish and it was very easy to use, you just paint it on and let it dry. Um, it was a little bit time consuming because I had to get in all the in between all the leaves and in between all the flowers so it was a little bit time consuming but it was just a case of painting it on. So now you've seen how I put this together let's have a reminder and look at the see it then. And let's see it now.
you want to try this for yourself, I've left a list of products I used in the description box below and here's a sneak preview of what I displayed on the tray. If you'd like to see how I created the items on the display tray, that will be in my next video. So if you don't want to miss that, then please subscribe. You can do that by clicking this button here. And if you like this video, please um, hit the like button and leave me a comment. And if you would like to see my first video, you can get that here. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye.